Over the next couple of days, I'm going to be taking a look at these two fragrances from the Latafa Pride collection. Because Middle Eastern fragrances just seem to be getting extremely popular uh, recently. And this is because the performance that you get from them compared to the relatively low cost that you pay makes them a, a really attractive option. And most of uh, the Middle Eastern fragrances resemble expensive Western uh, scents anyway. So in today's episode, I'm going to be focusing on this gold one called Nebras, which basically translates to the light in Arabic. It certainly looks the part, uh, but to find out my thoughts on it and uh, what it smells like, stay tuned to this episode of Max Frags. <laughs> Yes, hello again everybody and welcome to this latest episode of Mugs Frags. My name's Paul and today I'm taking a look at Ni Brass from the Latafa uh, Pride Collection which is a, a unisex gourmand fragrance and it comes in an eau de parfum concentration. And I picked up this 100ml bottle size from eBay and I paid £39.99 for it. I think the uh, Pride collection is a bit more luxurious than the regular Latafa fragrances so you can expect slightly better quality but they tend to come with a slightly higher price tag too which uh, I still don't think is uh, too bad considering I still paid under £40 for it. Yes, yeah, so into the presentation, and this one comes in a burgundy coloured, like a presentation box, uh, which is made from rigid cardboard and it's wrapped in a, a full leather material with this kind of uh, starburst pattern pressed into it. On the front is the name of the house and the name of the fragrance, and that's both printed in gold. And then a bit lower down, we've got uh, the size and the concentration, which again is, uh, is stamped into the box. Around the back is exactly the same story, apart from you get this light like, sticker of authenticity right in the top corner there. On the uh, the side you've got this uh, really big logo which uh, contains the name and the fragrance and at the top is another Latafa motif there. Uh, right at the very bottom is where you'll find all your uh, product information as well as your batch code, your barcode and also a QR code on there. Yeah, so this is like a, a jewellery box style and you get this like little ribbon on the side uh, to pull with the, which then exposes the bottle which is uh, mounted in a, a really nice plush velvet surround. Uh, the bottle again I would say feels really heavy and of a, a really decent quality. There's a, a large gold sunburst motif uh, embossed into the front and then around the side is where you'll find the name of the fragrance printed in gold. Then at the top there's uh, another uh, Latafa logo uh, and the cap is uh, metal and it really clicks uh, firmly into place and it's you really have to give it an almighty pull to remove it so uh, you can definitely pick this one up by the cap without the fear of it coming off. The atomizer on this is absolutely uh, fine and I can't fault this whatsoever in terms of how it's presented. And you also get, um, whatever I can find it, you also get this like little book uh, which includes all the uh, the fragrances in the uh, Latafa Pride lineup. And the uh, the good thing about this is it includes all the uh, the note breakdowns of each fragrance as well so you can uh, pick which one you want to, uh, to pay for next. Uh, but I would say yeah in terms of presentation this is uh, definitely a 10 out of 10 for the uh, price that you pay for it. The top notes in this are red berries and mandarin orange. In the heart of the fragrance there's vanilla, cacao and rose and the base notes in this are tonka bean, amber, musk and sugar. Okay, so this one opens up fairly fruity and very sweet. I do pick up on the mandarin orange and also the red berries, but these are uh, accompanied by the cacao and the vanilla, and pretty much from the initial spray, I was instantly reminded of uh, Montal's Chocolate Greedy, because you get that kind of chocolate orange kind of aroma thing going on. I have done a side-by-side -side comparison between the two and they aren't identical uh, and I find that the uh, the mandarin is a little bit more pronounced in the Montal version whereas in this it's more of a mix of mandarin and the red fruits but you won't fail to pick up on that chocolate greedy DNA as soon as you smell this one. However as it dries down it's the vanilla that I find to be the most prominent note so instead of getting a powdery dry chocolate texture from the cacao it's more like a creamy smooth milk chocolate with uh, a sprinkling of uh, vanilla essence. 
There's also some ambery touches in the background which you'll pick up on more in the fire dry down but for the most part the whole thing is like an indulgent overdose of sweetness that uh, can become a little bit uh, sickly if you get too trigger happy with the atomizer. The only note that I can't pick up on at all is the rose note which to my nose is pretty much non-existent in this fragrance. This is a, a chocolate cake with mandarin oranges on top and a, a dollop of vanilla ice cream on the side. It smells delicious but stay well away if you, uh, you aren't into your sweeter side of fragrances because this is as sugary as it gets. For me personally I would uh, have liked it to include one or two spicy notes like maybe cinnamon or ginger uh, just to tame the sweetness a little bit uh, but I really do like how this one smells and I think uh, it will get you plenty of compliments. Yeah, this one is definitely a cold weather fragrance for sure and uh, it would be best suited to wear preferably outdoors on a chilly day around Christmas time. It's also more of a casual fragrance and I couldn't ever imagine reaching for this like as a night out scent or as a work fragrance for that matter. For me, it's more of uh, one that I'd wear just to go out maybe Christmas shopping uh, when you're all wrapped up warm and or, or maybe when you're sat just in a coffee shop or something like that, when you just chilled out. It does have a warm cosy feel about it so it could also work well as a date night scent but I'd say it's more of a, a treat fragrance rather than a versatile dumb reach scent. Even though I, uh, I don't think this leans feminine in any way, I just reckon that more women will probably gravitate towards this rather than men. And I think it's just because of that fruity, like chocolate, uh, super sweet DNA that you'll find in this one. Yeah, this is a really good performer and you'll easily get eight to 10 hours out of it with a, a really strong projection for the first couple of hours. This has no problems filling a room or cutting through the freezing cold air. Uh, so it's one that you may need to go a little bit lighter with if you do plan on wearing it indoors. And to be honest, I have actually worn it a couple of times indoors and it has got on my nerves as well as the people around me. Imagine eating a Terry's chocolate orange. The first like three or four pieces are going to be great. But imagine then having to eat a whole wheelbarrow full of them. You'll, it won't be long before you uh, got pretty much over face and puked everywhere. And that's kind of the same principle as what you get here. And I would say uh, less is definitely more with, uh, with this one. So I find this to be really nice. It's a delicious smelling fragrance, but it certainly won't be for everyone, especially if you aren't into your super sweet aromas. The presentation is first class, uh, definitely for the price that you pay. And the performance of the juice is just great. And it's definitely gonna see you through a, like a full day without any problem at all. My only issue with it is when I would actually personally wear it and the answer to that is not that very often to be honest. It's more of an indulgent treat for, uh, every once in a while rather than one that I'd wear as maybe like a signature scent but that's not being hard on it. I also really enjoy a really big piece of chocolate cake but I just, wanna want, I just wouldn't want to eat it every meal and that's kind of what I get from this. It's great in small doses, uh, but I'd still give it an 8 or a 9 out of 10 because it, it does smell really great and it's uh, super high quality for the price that you pay. Yeah, so once again, that's about it for today's scent of the day. But coming up in the next episode, I am taking a look at the uh, the sibling of this one, which is called Wajud, and it smells absolutely nothing like this one whatsoever. Uh, so if you want to find out a little bit more about this one, then don't forget to tune into tomorrow's episode. I'm also underway with my Mammoth uh, Essence Vault project, which I aim to review every fragrance in the Essence Vault library over the uh, next few weeks. So if you haven't already seen the first four episodes, they are now available in a, an Essence Vault playlist on the homepage of my channel. And as always guys, if you have found this video useful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any more future uploads. So once again, thank you very much for tuning into this latest episode. Stay safe, keep smelling fresh, and I'll see you tomorrow for another one. Bye bye for now.